On Saturday, May 11th, 2019, I went to Cedar Point for the opening day. Being a Platinum Pass holder, I was able to get into the park an hour early, so I arrived and actually got inside the park at 9.15. I walked through several security checkpoints that they have set up for the early entry guests and as I'm walking through these checkpoints I'm noticing that a lot of the rides that are supposed to be open for early entry are still testing in gatekeepers case still having water dummies in them. This would be a common theme throughout the day more on that later. Being opening day it wasn't really surprising to see that they weren't ready this is pretty common and they have a lot of stuff that they have to get done. So I'm walking towards the back of the park all the way from the front, trying to get back there really quick to see if Steel Vengeance is open. I have no idea if it is or not. And I get right past the Gemini and I see the guys from Ohio Valley Coasters on YouTube. I'm not real familiar with this channel. I've seen some of their stuff in the past, but I said hi to them and they informed me that Steel Vengeance was not open when I asked them. So. I walked towards Top Thrill Dragster with them as they were wanting to get on that. We waited for over an hour for Top Thrill Dragster to actually open. They were testing it here and there. They sent several trains and it just kept rolling back and it would continue to throughout the day. But like I said, we waited over an hour for Top Thrill Dragster to even open. As we're waiting for Top Thrill to open, we see a bunch of the other rides still testing with no people in the trains, and Magnum was crawling unbelievably slow over its second hill. I mean, it looked like it was going to valley, and they were just running it for many hours during the day before it even opened with empty trains, probably just trying to get it to where it needed to be to have guests in it so it wouldn't valley. It was crawling so slow over that second hill. We were in a really good spot in the Top Thrill Dragster line and over time more and more people kept getting out of the line so we were really close to the front of the line. And I got on the second launch of the day on Top Thrill Dragster. I shouldn't say second launch. I should say I got on second ride of Top Thrill Dragster for the day. And a couple of the other guys from Ohio Valley Coasters actually rode in the train before us and got a rollback. So lucky them. Grant rode with me and we did not experience a rollback. So kind of stinks, but what are you going to do? After finally getting on Top Thrill, the guys from OVC decided to go eat. I split from them and I went over to Millennium Force. A train was stuck halfway up the lift hill. Apparently it had been there for about 20 minutes before that and it took about another 10 minutes after I got over there for the train to be released to go around the rest of the ride. So once this train went around, I got up, I stood near the entrance, there was only like two people in front of me, and I waited there probably about half an hour before the ride finally opened. As a result, I was able to get on Millennium Force very quick. Uh, they did have to switch a third train onto the track after I did get into the station, but still, I only waited about five minutes to get on once it actually opened back up. After Millennium Force, I head to the back of the park to see if Steel Vengeance is open yet, which it is not. To look at Maverick's line, Maverick's line is very long. Not surprising, especially since Steel Vengeance isn't open. So I stop in the Steel Vengeance shop and actually chat to Coaster Guy 101 who is working in there. If you guys don't know about his channel, go check him out. He's a really cool guy, really cool guy to talk to. And he works in the Steel Vengeance shop a lot. After chatting to him for a little bit, I go and get a ride on an old favorite, Gemini. I ride on the red side. Even though the line is pretty lengthy, this is just a people eater. And along with the great operations, I only waited about 20 minutes for this ride. After this, I go towards Magnum to see what the status is on it, if we know anything yet. They're still running empty trains. It's about 2.20 p.m. at this time. There's a small line formed outside of the queue. And shortly after I got over there, I saw a person in one of the trains testing it out. So I decided to stick around for a little bit, waited for 20, 25 minutes, and it opened up. And I got second train of the day on Magnum as well. A trimless ride. Note the new effects and fog in the tunnels, which they added for the 30th anniversary. This is a throwback to the stuff that they had in the tunnels when Magnum first opened in 1989. 
Great touch. I think it'd be a lot better at night, but it was nice. Pretty cool to see some TLC given to this old favorite. After this, I head towards the front of the park. I look at the lines for Gatekeeper, Val Raven, and Raptor. Decide I don't want to wait in those lines and that I need to eat. So I go to Pink's Hot Dogs, which is at the front of the park. Every single food line to stay at Cedar Point was really long. So I waited for about 15 to 20 minutes in line at Pink's. And after the line barely moved, I just said, screw this. And I left the park and I went to McDonald's. When I get done at McDonald's, I head back to the park. I park in the back and I head back to Cedar Creek Mine Ride. And I decided to get on this because I wanted to see all the new little touches they added to it, some of the characters and whatnot. And they did a really good job. It looks nice. I'm glad they gave it this TLC. Still a nice, fun family ride. I waited about 25 minutes to get on it. And I got in line a few minutes before five. And as a note, while I was waiting in line for Mine Ride, I noticed that Steel Vengeance was still testing. But at about 5.30... I got off of the mine ride and I see Steel Vengeance is running. So sometime between 5 and 5.30, Steel Vengeance finally opens up. So I go back towards the back of the park. Presumably as a result of Steel Vengeance opening up, the line for Maverick is much shorter than earlier. So I got in line. Even though the line was very long, these operations are great here. And it was only a 45 minute wait. So I got a fantastic ride on Maverick. What an outstanding ride. Just to think that this is right next door to arguably the best coaster on the planet as well. That's just so amazing. So after Maverick, I head towards Gemini. I get a second ride on it. This time I ride on the blue side. Gemini is definitely a very bumpy ride. It's old, but it's still great. And I would say it has one of the best drops in the park. Gemini is a really fun ride. After Gemini, I love me some Magnum, so I get in line for a second Magnum ride. I wait about probably close to 40 minutes for Magnum the second time, which is a lot longer than you typically wait for Magnum. And at this point, I had been pretty frustrated because it was getting later in the afternoon. I really hadn't ridden much yet. Shortly before I'm supposed to get on Magnum, it goes down for mechanical reasons, so I'm frustrated, and then I, I just leave the line. After this, I get on corkscrew because it's just a walk-on. And I also kind of wanted to see the redone trains up close with their new decals and everything, and they look great. Immediately when I get into the car of corkscrew, I look at the guy next to me and I said, why did I get on this ride again? And the ride hadn't even started, and I'm like, these restraints are awful. But I was actually really pleasantly surprised with corkscrew. I got a great ride on this. A great pop of airtime on that hill after the first drop. It's very smooth. I did not get any head banging whatsoever. My head did not bang into those over their shoulder restraints once. I mean, sure, it was a little bumpy in that my head was jostling around a little bit, but I did not get any head banging. It was a very smooth ride and I was very pleasantly surprised. I actually had a good experience on corkscrew. After this, I head over to Gatekeeper. It's about 7.30 at this point. The line is really short. So I take three rides on Gatekeeper, and these are awesome rides I get. Everything is running trimless, basically on opening day. So I got some great trimless rides. I'm really a big fan of Gatekeeper, honestly. At some point, I'm going to be doing reviews on a lot of these rides and then doing a top 10 Cedar Point coaster video. But um, I'm a huge fan of Gatekeeper, and I would say left side is a little bit better. I rode near the back on all these rides, and man, what, what a fantastic ride. I love it. After this, I get in line for Wicked Twister. There really isn't a line for it. Wicked Twister is one of my most frustrating things about this day at Cedar Point. Probably not the most frustrating, but I was pretty frustrated because I walked into the queue for Wicked Twister, I'm walking up to the station. There's a couple people in front of me that are walking a lot slower than me. Before we even get into the station, I see that the gates are opened up so people can get on the train. And if people weren't in front of me, I would have been walking a lot faster and I would have got on that train. Needless to say, I didn't get into the station in time. The gates close. The ride goes for that circuit. There was only three or four rows on the whole train with people in it. And the station's basically empty. Pretty much every row is completely empty. So after it runs for this ride that I did not make it on, Wicked Twister goes down for mechanical reasons. So I decided it's not even worth trying to wait for it to open back up. There's not any wait for Wicked Twister. I never did get around to Wicked Twister, but that's all right. I got the rest of the season. I've always enjoyed Wicked Twister. I think it's a fun ride. Next, I decide to head over to the classic of the park, Blue Streak. Now, typically in the past, I've been a supporter of Blue Streak. I think it's a really fun ride, some decent airtime. But last year when I rode it, I got a really painful ride on it. And 
it really wasn't enjoyable. I was happy to see when I got to Cedar Point on opening day that there had been some track work done to it. You could see the fresh, new, unpainted wood in some sections. And when I actually got to ride it, I was very happy to see that it's a great ride once again. It's very smooth, not painful, and it just offers a great airtime packed ride. Very fun. After I get off Blue Streak, it's about 8.45. The park's open until 10 o'clock. I get in line for Valraven, and this is actually my first time riding Valraven. The line is pretty lengthy, but once again, with great operations, I only waited 25 minutes in this line. And obviously, this is a people eater, too. I'm going to be doing a review later on for this ride, but this is the only dive coaster I've ever ridden to this point, and I was extremely disappointed by Valraven. After I get off Valraven, it's about quarter after nine, I decide to quickly walk back to Steel Vengeance because I haven't gotten to ride that for the day. At this point, I actually find out there is exclusive ride time for Platinum Pass holders. Ultimately, I decided just to get in the regular line because before they do the ERT, they have to let everybody that's in the regular line cycle through first. And I didn't know how long that would take before ERT would start, and it's been a really long day. I just get in the regular line. It was about an hour wait, and I talked to a fellow coaster enthusiast that was right in front of me in the line. I feel really bad. I do not remember your name. If you happen to be watching this video, comment on this. I feel really bad I don't remember your name. Really nice guy. But I ultimately ended my night with a night ride on Steel Vengeance at almost 11 o'clock. And boy, oh boy, absolutely my number one coaster. I mean, it, it has been ever since I wrote it last year. Nothing's changed. And I got a trimless ride on it, which was absolutely amazing. I mean, this thing was hauling, and there's just no words to describe it. What a perfect way to end a very long 14-hour day. So the day at Cedar Point started out very rough. Nothing was open. But after I ate and came back to the park, things got really good, and I really got a lot done. All in all, I got one ride on Top Thrill Dragster, one ride on Millennium Force, two rides on Gemini, one ride on Magnum, one ride on Cedar Creek Mine Ride, one ride on Maverick, one on Corkscrew, three rides on Gatekeeper, one on Blue Streak, one on Valraven, and finally one ride on Steel Vengeance. So overall, I got 14 rides on 11 of the major coasters at Cedar Point. And the only coasters I didn't ride were Raptor, Rougarou, Wicked Twister, Iron Dragon, and the two Kitty Coasters. So I'm really happy with how this day turned out, and I had an absolutely fantastic time, even though I was freezing my ass off the whole time. What a great day. And uh, I cannot wait to get back to Cedar Point soon here. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Bye.